So the, and then then the disclaimer that I'm not a Python programmer. You know, I could write Python programs, but uh, if you ask me which Python uh, function to call uh, for to um, uh, like for like these data frames and uh, parallel programming that sort of things, I would know on top of my mind. Um, so Radawan might uh, will help me uh, during this um, when I call certain functions, for example, for examples. Um, so we start with the uh, dependency management. So the first part is uh, motivation about uh, dependency and how how it could uh, bite you back, um, you know, if you don't do it uh, properly. So this section I will actually demonstrate with an example from um, uh, from a user support case that I was handling some time back. Uh, <clears throat> after that, we'll go for the exercise. We go for the exercises in the backup rooms, uh, 15 minutes. Um, uh, after that, uh, we'll come back here. <clears throat> then I will motivate a little bit about uh, package management, um, mainly the material uh, shown here. Uh, but during that package management, I will purposefully try to certain things wrong um, and show you certain pitfalls. And uh, I will um, I will I will uh, make the case by showing you know how how bad it can go wrong, for example. <clears throat> and I will try to have a critical eye on this. Yes. Yes. So um, um, if you see something that I, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> that I, uh, so if, if you see something going wrong, that's because purposefully I'm doing that, not because uh, <laughs> it went wrong. <laughs> so I have a slight cough today, sir, so excuse me there. And the exercise two that I will do at this demonstration, uh, uh, not the, like we'll not go for the breakout rooms and also the same with the exercise three, because there I want to emphasize certain, um, pitfalls as well. These exercises you could do after the course, like not, it's not, not light live coding here. Um, then for the, um, the recording dependency part, I'll do introduction and then we'll go for the exercises in the breakout rooms and then we'll have a discussion. So everything goes well, we could uh, end this by 9.50 uh, and have like 10 minutes uh, the discussion before we go to a uh, break. Uh, does that sound good, uh, Radon? Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. So let me adjust my terminal a little bit. Um, can you have the the teaching material available for you when you have it? Because I'm going to share my terminal now, so I might ask certain things. Yeah. So I have it open, and I also recommend people to to open. So on one half of your screen, you can watch Sabri, and on the other half, uh, maybe have the material open, and that's what I have on my side as well. Yes. Thank you. So uh, I, I was thinking right on that uh, when I when I start this, I would just make my uh, vanilla terminal ready that you know, some something that's uh, perfectly made for the demonstration. Uh, but then I thought it doesn't make sense like we have to we have to show what real life is. So I have certain setups in my terminal mm -hmm. that I will unset first, in order mm -hmm. to come for the vanilla. So so these things uh, that I'm going to do, you don't have to follow or like, like don't type along because this is very specific to my laptop, that I didn't want to hide anything. Right, Radwan? So don't type along. Sounds good. Um, Maybe we should clarify what is meant by vanilla. Vanilla means no configuration. Thank you, Radwan. Yes. So, um, so I'm going to activate. So I have this top and bottom uh, terminals. Um, because if you see that certain uh, terminals, when you open up, uh, it will start with a code prompt or you know some Python activated. Um, so in my laptop, I make sure that nothing is activated when it is uh, starting up. So I'm going to start a, a Conda um, environment here. I have this um, file I, I created. Um, you can have a look at that file if, later on, mm. but it is. So it just activate my Conda. So it doesn't automatically get activated whenever I um, start it. So Radon, do you do you have your code activated always in your terminal, or is it that something you want to explicitly do? So I do it like you. I don't have it activated every time because actually I prefer to have different environments for different projects. And maybe we will say something about that later. So I also same as you. When I open my terminal, nothing is there, and then I actively activate the environment that I that I need. And in in this case, you are activating an environment called base. So that's the base environment. And later one can create different environments for different projects. Can we comment, so that, uh, can we comment on the whole philosophy? So you're doing stuff from the shell here. 
which is changing different properties of the shell, the environment variables, that will activate or deactivate different environments. And here an environment is the Python environment, so the Python version and all the packages that are installed. Is that the summary here? Is... Um, yeah, so more or less, so as you see that, uh, if, you, if, you, if you notice what I was typing, um, maybe a little fast, I apologize for that, that I, I try to, what I'm trying to do is I have, I am trying to have two NumPy versions on two terminals to, mm. to show you something. Right? Okay. So here I, I typed a Conda, uh, I, I, I missed one of these, um, this activate part, which will come a little later. So that's okay. why this error is. <clears throat> Okay, so is that the main point here? So you're trying to show that you can have two different NumPy versions. Exactly, Richard, okay. on, on the same laptop. Got it. All and right. then all the details, I guess we'll learn later, but that's not the main point right now. Uh, that is, uh, that's also a very good point. And thank you for reminding me that. So these things I'm, I'm just typing along, like uh, typing a little faster, we'll come back to in the second half. Okay. Um, yeah. So then uh, this uh, PS1 uh, and that sort of things that I usually do before the course, but here what I'm doing is I'm, I'm sort of uh, shrinking my prompt so you can see better. So there's no magic, there's no Python magic involved in that part. So now I have two NumPy versions. Uh, and as I said, Radhan, before that, um, that I start, uh, so I, I'll make the prompt a little bit uh, uh, better here with the space. And I'm going to clear the screen. Mm -hmm. So I have two NumPy versions, 1.15 and 1.21 on the uh, on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to um, um, execute a, a small script that I uh, pre-created in my uh, uh, directory. So I will open that and NumPy. Yeah. So this is uh, so I'm going. I'm, uh, this is uh, some um, just broad cut shape uh, script. Uh, I, I I have no idea what it does, but I know it do some uh, something. Uh, <laughs> do you have any idea of what, what would this do? Well, uh, I should have paid better attention at the NumPy lesson, but I think Richard knows. Yes. Oh, uh, so. Well, it does something, but I see that it doesn't work. So I guess whatever it is, it's designed to show that NumPy doesn't support this function. Uh, not exactly, Richard. So mm. NumPy 1.15 doesn't support this function, mm. but the 1.21 does. Okay. So this function, let's say if it is in your program, a script that you distributed with your publication, mm -hmm. when the user, when, when an end user or somebody want to reproduce this, want to uh, run mm -hmm. this, it will catastrophically fail, like in the top case, with a long stack trace. Like here, it's very clear because I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on a specific. I'm triggering something very specific. Yeah. So the, so the error is very clear, which says you know that attribute is not defined in NumPy. Yeah. Uh, but if it is inside something, something else, inside something else, it will be a long stack trace, hard to um, right. detect. Yeah. But, so what we're trying to do in this lesson is to prevent this from happening by telling the user or the end user or your friend, or especially, especially, especially your future self. Yeah, great point. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That this script is designed for this version. Like, mm -hmm. you know, attach that information in like, like some metadata. Like right? you, in, in addition to your script, you tell that in order for this to work, you need this NumPy version. And here's a way for you to get this mm -hmm. unambiguously. Does that make sense, Radwan? So that's, that's something it, we're going to show you. It makes sense. And I think we all need that sooner or later because, uh, I mean, the software evolves. But at some point, our projects, they stop evolving. I mean, then we switch to different projects. Mm. But we still want them to work on the same computer or in future. And then we need to worry about the dependencies. So that's why we show these tools. Yes. Um, so having said that, uh, so those things are more uh, described with more examples here, but I, I thought like showing you like a real case that I have encountered before. Uh, actually, I, uh, I had to mention that I have stripped this down. So this was part of a long stack test, but when I was doing system support, I, mm -hmm. I strip it down so the so the error is more clearer. But mm -hmm. if it if I ran the exact program that I actually 
encountered, it will be a long stack test, very hard to uh, debug. Yeah. Um, so, so Radovan uh, and Richard, now what we do is, with that in mind, we go to this exercise one, which is 15 minutes exercise. Uh, go to your breakout rooms and so, discuss. Um, sorry, Achar, yes. Since many people are watching either in small groups or independently, should we take a few minutes and have people write in HackMD while we go on? Um, yeah, sounds fine. Yeah. Um, um, do you want me to explain the exercise yeah. a little bit? or? Yeah, if you talk, I will prepare it. Yeah, very good. Um, so in breakout rooms, uh, how do you yourself install packages, libraries that you use in your work? Uh, do you use this uh, PyPy, uh, which I'll show you a little later? Or you use uh, something like um, Conda? Or as sysadmin, uh, I will, I will ha I'll have like a small uh, demo uh, later on. You, you can use system package management, like AppKit or Yum even, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you do this? And have you any experience uh, that um, a project needed a different version of Python library than one your computer has? You know, how how would you sort of do the do that uh, gymnastic I did in the morning? How would you do it when you do it? Right. Yeah. Uh, so this is a discussion. There's no right and wrong answers. Mm -hmm. So there are different points of view. Uh, and uh, if you know what the requirement or text and requirement YAML is, try to discuss um, that as well. But that will, will come back in a later on session. Yeah. And so the goal is that we now kind of discuss all together in HackMD. I mean, some people are in um, working groups, and then you can discuss it within groups. But we can assume that, I mean, many, many learners are watching via Twitch and are not really inside any breakout room. Yeah. And then you can discuss here on, on HackMD. It can be interesting to see what other people write. It's yeah. not a problem if you've never heard of requirements of text or environment of YAML or Conda or PyPI. No problem at all. Uh, but I think we all sooner or later have some sort of horror stories of things going wrong on our computer or the computers of our colleagues. Yeah, sounds fine. Yeah. Um, then uh, Richard, can you take the screen from me for the HackMD? Yeah, it's there. Yeah, see you, uh, can you place the time as well, like exactly in another 15 minutes, uh, so you'll not... Um, I think 15 uh, minutes is too long. So yeah, maybe 10. we're getting some, I mean, even 10, I think, is quite long. Mm -hmm. Should we, I think we can basically take a few minutes while we are watching it live here. Okay. So we see many pips and condas, some with the operating system. Brew is a good idea. Yeah. Um, tracking dependencies. I must say, until maybe five ish years ago, I didn't track dependencies well myself. So. That's definitely understandable. So Radovan, do you have any experience with this uh, this poetry that is mentioned here? Um, yes, a little bit of a little bit of experience. I think it's nice, nice project. Um, I'm not using it myself, but yeah, nice project to solve actually a couple of issues. It can it can do both dependency tracking, but it's it can also it's also for packaging. So it's also relevant in, in the third lesson of today. I'm using something else for packaging, but not because it's better, it's just personal preference. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I have yeah. a real example. So in fact, last night, or no, it was yesterday morning, I was trying to update the course web page, and then there was an error from the thing that built it, and it wasn't working. So I searched the error message and eventually find that Jupyter had changed something which made it somehow incompatible. And then uh, Jupyter made some change that was incompatible with some versions of Python. So read the docs was failing to build the skicomp.alto.v website. So then I had to update our requirements.txt file so that way it could build. 
And yeah, I mean, I have to say the number of times I've done this is perhaps a little bit surprising. Maybe also surprising how little I've had to do it. Yeah, and these days when I like get a Python project from somebody else, um, one of the first things I do is to look at the requirements, the text on environment level, and and then I think about okay, how can I set up an environment for this? Mm. And it also comes back to what Richard mentioned yesterday. I think about I think we talked about versions and pinning versions already yesterday somewhere. Yeah, and. Um, if if I have different projects on my computer and and they both pin, so they refer to a very specific version, but the version is simply different, mm. then we need a mechanism so that both projects work on my laptop somehow. And so now this is this is the point of this lesson. Yeah. So how is the hack MD, Richard? Is there any any questions there? Uh, for us to answer, if people are just uh, there's, with the exercises. There's a lot of good comments here about different ways people do things. Mm. Yeah, I think so far no question that needs to be really yeah. raised here. I'm trying to have an eye on this, but yeah. Should we carry on then? Are you ready for the next part? Um, let me let me prepare my screen again. Okay. Uh, give me, I'll give you the heads up in a moment. Yeah. Maybe I can I think kind of raise one thing from the HackMD, uh, but maybe we'll discuss it later. So I could write the dependencies, I could write them into README, or I could write them into requirements.txt, or I could write them into environment.yaml. So what, what could be the advantage of using these these files instead of writing them somewhere. Although I have to say that uh, writing them somewhere is already really, really better than writing than not writing them down at all. But maybe we'll come back to that. Um, Radwan, uh, yeah. So the thing is, uh, at the end, I will try to come back to that. Okay. But if you, if I forget that, please remind me because uh, uh, it, it's at the end of the lesson because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to bypass this bind and uh, the packaging thing. So we could discuss that later. later. Uh, so Richard, uh, uh, my screen is it shared now? Uh, there you go. Okay. So the next part we're going to do is uh, about this conda and pip, uh, pp or whatever you call it, uh, pypi. Uh, how do you pronounce it, uh, Radwan yourself? Pypi. Uh, pi because it's the Python okay. package index. Pi pi. Python package index. Okay. So that thing. So um, I'm going to install the same uh, uh, because. Um, because there are different package managers. So why we have these different things? Um, the main thing with the uh, Conda is that it incorporates additional non-Python uh, code and dependency libraries and system level libraries and even something called glibc, which is sort of um, um, low level system related alongside the packages. And they distribute Pre-compiled binaries. Do you know what a pre-compiled binary is, uh, Richard? Yeah. So, well, other than exactly what it says, I guess it basically means that your computer doesn't need the development tools in order to prepare the code for use, and it's done before you get it. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Uh, I'm going to do that uh, magic I did before because I, I want to make sure that. Um, my conda is not always activated. So in conda, and I have uh, on the bottom, I have a, a Python 3, let's see what version it is. So I have 3.5, uh, Python system wide installed. And on, on top, uh, I have um, um, conda activated. So I'm going to install with pip install. Uh, I'm going to use this flag user which is to install on my uh, local home directory. But uh, in the latest Python versions, they actually check where they have root access, then they will fall back. But I, I see this is as a, like a good practice um, uh, when I do that. So do you know, uh, Radhawan, that we had used so two um, equal signs when we do this NumPy uh, installation? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Um, 
okay it's already installed um so i'm going to uh, remove that but as i said before this is not a type along because i will do certain things wrong so don't type along i'm going to remove uh, something uh, from my uh, home directory if you do this one you will don't do it you okay. will lose your you will lose your um <laughs> thing but i'm 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 on a, like a safer environment that i could do this um um very like without um like uh, without breaking my computer itself yeah i'm getting really stressed while looking this watching <laughs> watching this happening yeah so so the so one part of uh, some things that i'll show is how to break your system um so not to not to try at home you see how how the, it's it's why are you deleting this now just just that we understand um so this was uh, um uh, in my uh, my my side some preparation mistake that i already tried installing it before uh, coming here so when i installed it it said um numpy is already installed so if it is already installed i can't show the mistakes i'm going to sh show mm -hmm. and can right. i also ask you are you going to later also show how to install into a virtual environment exactly yes i do yeah. i do because but i can now, say that what you do now here i normally don't do but maybe this is the point yes yes okay good yeah okay um and i'm going to install that and i'm going to here conda install first i do a conda search right numpy uh, 1.21 here it's it's installed you see the other one here it says a wheel file it installed a wheel file that is sort of like a self-contained uh, zip file archive file which everything uh, inside so it mm -hmm. has these binaries and everything incorporated so here if you see um, I'm sorry, my screen is a little bit uh, too much to show you here. Let's see if I can uh, scroll up. There are different versions of uh, NumPy in Conda, if you see. So here, here the, the uh, IP, the uh, PIP didn't uh, complain. It went, uh, checked my architecture, it checked my operating system and got the proper wheel down. Uh, here, the Conda NumPy has different versions. So what this means is, so this NumPy, is for Python 3.7, this is for 3.8, and this is for 3.9. So they have provided different versions. And what follows is a hash, which is very specific, which is in which, which says that it, it uh, there are very specific version. Maybe there's a bigger set of dependencies that will um, need this specific version. Um, so to make sure that I install the correct one, I'm going to do do you know, Radon, if I do this, what will happen? NumPy 1.21.2, and I'm going to install this one. So this is a very specific version. So this is something uh, that you always encounter. The, the Conda, is, people say Conda is very slow. So Conda is slow if you don't ask it to uh, install something very specific. So I'm going to install this. But don't do that either. So this is also something you shouldn't do. So what will do, this happen uh, is that it will go and modify your base Conda environment with this NumPy. So every time you install other packages, it has to go and make sure it doesn't conflict with this thing. So I'm going to do that anyway. So I, I did two things that you shouldn't normally do. One thing is modify your base Conda environment. And the other thing is, you know, uh, re rely on your uh base for the for like the user for installing uh pip packages here you see this sold environmental failed the reason for that is if you remember before i had a specific python version which is 3.8 now i am asking you to install 3.9 so it has to think it has to think a lot it has to mm -hmm. go through some ma matching and it has to find out so let's i'm going to cancel that <clears throat> Let's try a 3.8 version. And also in this case, we don't do equal equal, we do just one equal, right? Because Conda is a bit different than PIP in this case. That's that's a good point uh, that I forgot to mention, yes. So it'll it'll go and it'll uh, do this. And it, again, it's not the specific version, so it'll, it'll think. So 
um it it'll eventually it'll go and install uh, i think but let's see what it uh, what it's trying to install at least um here it, it didn't uh, do anything because everything that's supposed to be installed is packaged and the uh, pip detected my architecture and everything and it got the correct uh, uh, thing downloaded so while, so while this is uh, working, can I ask you a question from Hakandi? Yes. Uh, the question is, are we going to see how we can deal with this uh, solving environment failed? Yes. Good. Yes. Uh, for this one, so be, be, until this uh, goes on, uh, thinking about, because I, I purposefully made the, the installation slow, uh, I'm going to um, cancel this. Right. So instead of, the, instead, instead of that, let me do uh, create name. Uh, the the name I'm typing here may not match exactly the uh, the name in your in your example, but uh, don't worry about it because you could select uh, whatever name <coughs> you want here. So now we're making a new content environment. Which will have its own completely separate set of installed software Correct. with exactly what we need. Yes. And we called it NumPy. We call it mm -hmm. NumPy. Mm -hmm. uh, and it failed uh, because I, you see this uh, red one that I specified a name and I said uh, NumPy here, I can again something, something here. So that was the reason for that. Uh, and I'm going to remove the uh, I'm going to remove the specific Python version as well. So it's just going to go and create. Let's see how this done. Do you see how fast it was? It was not thinking at all. So then I I want to also focus here. So the conda not like just the bean. It was installed in the uh, NumPy base. It was installing the OpenSSL libraries. It was installing the math kernel libraries for. Uh, mathematical um, calculations. So it, it, it pulled down everything. And if you see here, you will see certain, uh, uh, like earlier for NumPy, you had um, uh, Python 3.9, 3.6, here we have H H51. So I want you to discuss in the in the HackMD, like not now, but um, if you know what it is, please mention that. So here you have 3.9, but some of, some of them do not have Python uh, associated with it. And, and the reason why we got all these, uh, can I just explain that now we got lots of packages that we didn't ask for. So where do they come from? They are dependencies of NumPy. So we wanted NumPy, but we got a lot more because NumPy depends on other things, which may depend on other things. Yes, that's uh, that, that's very true. Um, so do you remember that one that I did this uh, very bad <coughs> recursive forceful removal of my home directory things? Yes, I remember that. Yes. So. Uh, how would you avoid that from it is using virtual environment as you mentioned uh, before. So instead of um, um, doing these things, um, uh, if you have a virtual environment prepared for that, it's easier to remove and uh, activate and uninstall because when you do this uh, in, in your home directory, it will be always NumPy 2.1. So here, uh, if you remember this uh, example I showed before, Instead of that, I'm just going to print the version of NumPy here and where it is loading from. Um, so Radhawan, sorry that I don't go inside this Python prompt because sysadmins, they don't have time for that. So they use this one-liners. Um, so in the, in, the, in the material, I have included this one-liner and I have to apologize because we have a very high standard of um, um, when we, we, I know this code refinery, we keep a very high standard when it comes to um, um, teaching material. So the, the example I included is not code highlighted. So it, it might be hard to find, I'll, let, I'll show you later. So I'm going to find, so it says that it's loading from this location. Mm -hmm. And it's even uh, Python 2.7. And then let's say if I ask Python 3, you see there's a, another location. So uh, probably your program which you run might not call Python 3 uh, as itself. So I also installed Python 2 just to make sure that how these things could be ambiguous. Uh, but I think we, we could need some explanation here. Oh, so we see these two terminals and it might not be so clear 
how they differ. So on top, on top we have one way of dealing with dependencies, and the way is Conda, and it's I think it's perfectly fine. And on the bottom we show a different way of doing, dealing with it, right? Correct. So this is with pipe a pip. It mm -hmm. is another way of installing this. I'm, I'm doing the same thing in uh, two different ways. Okay. Um, so then um, let's see how oh, there's a scratch directory. Um, you, you can uh, do something like um, for the um, for, for the same same sort of like isolation that you did for the um, uh, conda, uh, you can ask Python. Um, Create a uh, vim with numpy two point twenty one point two. So this is so when you do this, you'll have this uh, um, environment. Uh, you can activate it, but do you think, uh, Radwan, if I just uh, activate it? I would have NumPy already because I already called it um, NumPy. Let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah. So again, it's loading from uh, my scratch init NumPy. That is actually unexpected, is it? So it, the, when I um, have this installed. So I have this um, NumPy 2.21 I created. Then now when I'm, uh, I have activated that, so I'm, I'm loading the uh, NumPy, but it's not loading from where it should be. You, do you see this um, difference here, Tarwan? Mm -hmm. It should be loading from this place. So I have to install uh, NumPy there. Install by two point uh, maybe two equal signs. Yes, one point two point two. So uh, even after you have these environments, you might have different setups in your um, computer. So this is a one line I always use uh, to make sure that NumPy. So it's still it's still uh, not um, using this. But let's say if I use Python now. It's still using the uh, NumPy version that is actually, that's something that I, I didn't want. So is there any idea that how can I like use the Python NumPy version from this specific version? Hmm. You see this CD uh, uh, here, another one. So, there I had a pitfall made. When when Python loads, it also checks your current directory whether you have installed something. Mm -hmm. So it gave priority to what I already had. So I had to move out of that directory even though I had a virtual environment. So that thing doesn't happen with Conda. So when you have the Conda, it's what you get. So activate that. Um, Can I ask something before we continue here? Just to get a, take a step back, because one question that came up, which I think many many people have this question, is okay. So there is Conda, and it can do, it can solve for all these problems, and there is Pip, which can also solve almost all of these problems. So which one should we use? How do they differ? Why why are there two solutions to this problem? Um, so if you if you if you have uh, so when you have uh, Pip, the the libraries that you could install. Up uh, distributed Python packages and APIs for uh, other uh, like C libraries, for example, uh, but not system level libraries. If you remember that SSL library that I showed you, um, I'm not sure it's uh, still here. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, M MKL and also uh, this SSL. Um, there was a SSL library that was yeah here. So let's say. If you try to use this package NumPy on your system, and if I install it, if you don't have SSL installed as a package manager, like as a system wide, this package will complain. So in a place where you don't have root access or in HPC system or a shared resources, 
without relying on the system admin you can include everything uh, in your conda so in a in a environment in a shared environment conda makes sense because then you don't have to rely on system level like rpm insulations yeah that maybe answer? add that for so just an additional explanation is that what pipei traditionally pipei is for python packages they can there are many projects that are actually not it doesn't have to be pure python but it's it all the packages on pipei they have a python interface and for many most packages it's totally fine to use pipei uh, conda was created it's more general because it's not only for python you can distribute c++ packages on conda and packages written in other languages so for some projects and for some communities um it's easier to use conda i would say it depends a bit on the project and depends on the community there are projects which distribute on both and it doesn't matter for some projects it's a lot easier to use conda for many projects it's, it's totally fine to use pipei a little bit of personal preference so I often start with virtual environment, and if that somehow doesn't work, then I switch to Conda. But that's that's just me. Yes. Um, so again, Radwan, um, um, that's a good point because I see that in our survey there are some uh, biology uh, people from biology as well. So there are things in Conda that, for example, sequence um, assembly. For example, you could this will fail, but we'll see what uh, what did you fail with. This will say that um, it's not found samples. So that's so, where, yes, go ahead. Sabri, just so you know, we have, according to the schedule, we have 18 minutes left for mm -hmm. this part, um, for this lesson. We do have um, extra time to go over at the end, but thought I would let you know so you can strategically use it. Yeah, I think I will be done by 10 minutes. Next one I'm going to show is the requirement. Okay. Uh, so this is a channel, uh, Radwan Richard. So there are different channels that distribute different packages. So you can go to this Bioconda channel by specifying a dash C and get you this, uh, this uh, tools, which are not necessarily Python. So that advantage is there for uh, we use uh, um, Conda packaging, but this thing you can't do with uh, it. Um, so before I um, like, yes. So the, the next <coughs> section I'm going to that. So these two exercises I did with sort of like, um, like an example. So I didn't follow exactly the, the steps, but, uh, but I, I gave you the like general idea. Please go ahead and uh, try it after later on. But I, I uh, there's this, um, um, thing I want to show that that will uh, that actually failed and I thought it was nice thing to fail. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to clear this uh, and exit my window and bring out a new one very quickly because I want something very clean. Um, yeah, let me, sorry about that. Is my screen again okay, Richard? Mm -hmm. Um, so this uh, virtual environment I'm going to create here. Um, oh, uh, Python three, maybe. That's a good point. Uh, in uh, in Python two, we have this when. So I always get this because I <coughs> saw two versions just to show you certain things. Um, I'm going to uh, check my version and show you something, another pitfall, because uh, uh, this is not recommended to do uh, in your homes. Remember, I want the Python version, and I'm going to copy paste something from the, from the uh, teaching material itself. Oh, first, before I need to activate it, Bin activate, and I'm going to do this one. What will what will happen now? Let's see. It failed. Do you know another one why it failed here? The example I just copy pasted, but uh, why it failed? I'm not sure why it failed. Yes. So that's something like very interesting as well. 
uh, that the answer for that was in here in uh, the p pi p uh, oak numpy. Uh, I'll go to this numpy version, which is the latest, uh, you know, Radhan. Then I have this release history. And I'm going to find 1.3.1 that I just installed. So it was quite old. It says that there's a new version available. And I'm going to say download files. And if I look closely, if you remember Radhan that I, I and Richard that I showed you about this Python 3.7 binaries and 3.9. So there are specific binaries that you make the wheel files, it, it attached to a certain uh, um, Python version. So if I go here, there's Python 3.1 for um, like Mac OS. Uh, so my one is Unix. So we have two point, Python 2.7, uh, Python 3.4, um, mm -hmm. Python 3.6, but there's nothing for Python 3.8. Mm -hmm. okay. So when, when pip going to install, it will go and check what is the best, the, what is the compatible version for me? What is the Python I have? It's not going to install Python. What is the what is the architecture? It's going to pull. So if you don't have this, it will go to the zip file, which is the source code for NumPy. Mm -hmm. And it will try to get download it. Um, sorry. It will it will try to, down, it, right? try to try to build from source code. So mm. that's why it failed. Because I don't have a certain um, things that I need to <coughs> sort of build it. So if this happened, what you should do is first you should uh, you could do a conda environment with Python 3.6. Mm. Uh, you would build a conda environment with Python 3.6 and then 9.3 and uh, numpy 3.1.3.1. Uh, which you can't here with, without modifying your system Python. Here you can't do it with uh, P, uh, PIP. That you have to go for by uh, Conda. Yeah, good point. So that's easy in Conda. In Conda, I can actually have different Python versions in uh, in parallel. That is a little bit more difficult with. Yes. So in uh, when you when you make the when it pickups the Python already available for you in your system. So that's why this failed there. Um, then uh, we have a, uh, like another exercise that we could have a, like um, a discussion around it. Uh, how would you record these things? You know, the Python 1.31 with Python 3.6, uh, NumPy this version, Pandas this version, how would you uh, specify this? So there are two uh, ways to do this. Um, um, for, for one way for the conda and one for, for the um, um, pip, but more or less same uh, procedure. What you do is you create a text file, uh, a YAML file for Conda, and a text file for um, Pip. And when you install the, the Conda, you would say, um, create my environment with this name, use this file. Instead of NumPy, you would specify that. I, I'll, I'll quickly show within the next five minutes a short uh, example. Uh, and the format of this file is given here. Sorry, uh, not there. Um, here. So here, Adwan, you could also specify and reject that uh, the versions. So you could be very specific, or you could be more general. Yes. But in con, yeah. So here, um, the did you, did you try to say anything, uh, Adwan? Did you to say something or? Yeah. So I think this is very important. So these files, they have these specific names. And it's, of course, you can call them differently, but I recommend to use these names because other other tools understand these names. And we will, um, like later after the break, we will actually see a tool that that will read these files and use them. Hmm. And and about should we specify versions or not? There was a bit of a discussion yesterday. I think it depends when, if you want to uh, archive your project and you want to make it reproducible for the next five to 10 years, and you don't intend to really modify it much, it, I think it's good to specify the versions. Yes. On the other hand, if you, if you create a tool that you want to be used by other tools and it's evolving, maybe it's good to keep it a little bit more relaxed. Yes. Um, but it depends on, <coughs> sorry, um, like how specific you want to be. So this might install in a certain, uh, certain uh, computer 
but let's say this num point, uh, numpy 1.19 is bound to python 3.8 and the user's computer has 3 point, 1 point, uh, python 3.9 um, for example like the like the numpy example that i mm -hmm. showed you that failed that might create issues so this is um, like less less confinement like uh, there's more freedom mm -hmm. but it might break your code here you you specify more this might not install in user's computer so because normally the consumers of your code may not be system admins or like uh, know a lot about like why, why it failed for example why why that numpy failed they might not go and in, uh, investigate they might they might just not use the software because it's because this red uh, errors this is too much like it's overwhelming when you see this right yeah so Thanks. yeah so it's it's better to be it's it's a compromise that you want to make between um being very specific uh and make it difficult or making more relax and break your code so you have to think i, I think that's there's more coming about python yeah. packaging later on the setup pie and uh, uh was it, uh, we are going to talk about bind uh, cell. Uh, yes, we will. Yes, yes. I would like to come to one question in HackMD, but or maybe you can keep this open. You, you showed this one command. If you scroll a little bit, what was it? A little bit down or up? Mm -hmm. um, no, in the material, you showed that that you can install Conda or a virtual environment from a file. Mm -hmm. Somewhere you showed that. Yes. Like, can you just scroll to this? Yes. Yeah. So that's. I just want to say that this is something that I do. So if when when I install packages, what I actually do is I edit the file first, and then I install from a file, because then I have the advantage to have it documented at the same time. And I want to connect that to a question in HackMD that um, in this environment.yaml you can also specify channels. So you can have channels in there. You can you can give the environment a name. You can give which packages, which versions. So one way of kind of remembering what channels did I install it from is to, to edit the file first and then install from the file. One thing I don't know is whether you can have multiple channels in the same environment.yaml. I, I don't have an answer because I'm, I'm more of a virtual environment yes. person. Yes, so you could have multiple environments uh, in your um, uh, channel, multiple environments, uh, multiple channels in environment in Konda. Yes, you could do that. Okay. Answer is yes. Uh, you could uh, so uh, sort of one. So this is all the material that I'm going to um, show. But uh, because of that question, I'm going to show something uh, very quickly in the next two minutes. Um, the the recommendation here is to write down the the, the text file alongside without um, installing them directly. So when you want numpy, pandas, uh, matplotlib, scipy, you write them down in the file and then install it. So Python. Um, yeah, the, for the pip, um, so it's okay, but in but in Conda, um, as practically, it's very difficult to go to get the specific version. So what I do is, for Conda, um, I, I install the um, um, uh, the Conda environment first. Then let's say, uh, and then I do a Conda. Uh, I do get the command exact command first. In my in export maybe and. Yeah, so you could do a conda env export and have this that specific hashes that I mentioned before. And this file is already created. So here the default channel. Here you can have bioconda or whatever you want. Um, maybe I can show that as well. Uh, Deactivate. So that is uh, to, to come out of an uh, uh, environment. You have to use this conda deactivate. You don't have to mention the name. Uh, I'm going to create another um, environment. Conda create um, stamp tools with uh, bioconda as the channel. Yes. Uh, so uh, Richard the. Is there anything that um, in the in the HackMD that we would mention? Mm. Well, a good question was um, it it got some answers, but I think it's still a good question. What so what to do if the environment broke? 
like we did something and it's broken. What is a good good strategy there? And I mean, I can I can just uh, uh, one answer that I wrote there is that it will happen sometime. But uh, to keep like what I do is that I I actually don't install anything into the base environment. I consider that as a read only thing. I create a new environment for each project because then I'm less afraid of breaking things. And if something breaks, well, I just delete it and recreate it because it's 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 just for that one project. It's not my whole system. That is a very good answer, Radwan. Because when you have this isolation system, isolation Conda package uh, environments, then it's easier to delete and rebuild. If you do system wide, it's it's very difficult. Your system will break. So this this example I did to install this Bioconda to show that how to specify multiple channels. So you could specify multiple channels on this. So after do this, you can actually export this to a file. Uh, let's say requirement. .yaml. There's some typo there. Yes. Requirements. Oh yeah. Uh, re... And it should I, I, be it should be I, I requirements guess. of text, not YAML. Uh, for the for the oh, context wait, oh, YAML, yes, for the context. Okay, but environment YAML then. Okay, so um, by the way, Radwan, the name um, doesn't uh, at in the wrong name, name actually doesn't matter here. So it's just you have to specify, but it, it's good to use the same name in order to um, be, uh, for example, consistent with the material. Uh, here, then you have the environmental file, then you can actually version control this. Um, and I have the head. So version control this alongside your code. So that's the best practice. And in addition to that, let's say I did this um, um, but it, it, it also uh, showed me all the dependence. So this will be a, like a self-contained, um, fully self-sufficient uh, requirement file. Mm -hmm. But let's say if you want to do, uh, I think this is the command, but if I not, I will mean, do a little Googling. If you do a from history, it will tell you what you explicitly said. So this is sort of that the relaxed version that we are talking about, like not to, um, confine the user a lot. So if you just want to see what explicitly you asked, you could use the from history, or you could say the complete thing. So we have two minutes left mm. before the break. Um, I wanted to clarify one thing because you said uh, you could version control this file. This may not be so clear to everybody. So what um, version control itself is a little bit outside of this course, but what we absolutely recommend is to keep this file in the same folder, in the same repository, the same project as all the code. So it's really good practice to, to keep the requirements of text or environmental YAML in the same folder where you have your Python code in the same repository, not in a different place. Very, very good point, uh, Radovan. So I will also add um, like your documentation, your requirement file and your code, if they're in the same repository, then it's the users, users, especially your future self will be happy with you. And you'll have like less cursing when people write to um, write, uh, run this code. Uh, so Richard, that's all I wanted to present. And okay. um, I think uh, this uh, nice arrangement that you're going on and I would like to thank for your effort in organizing these things and all the instructors and the helpers who are helping out and the people who answered in the HackMD and also people who are participating and uh, I wish you a good life further. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what do you like more time to do anything else? Unless there's a specific Maybe. question, I don't want to dig into anything deep because um, yeah. Uh, yeah, showing something really fast doesn't help unless right. I uh, explain yeah. that. I guess if we have more questions, we can use the buffer time at the end and come back to <laughs> special topics. Okay, so with that being the case, I guess we will go to the break.